Hey there nation, welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapski, and on this episode, episode number 33, we're going to show you how to cheaply as well as quickly paint up some demons of Slanesh using our Cheapskate quick paint method. In this method, we're going to show you how to use a couple of really cheap craft paints to create an excellent tabletop finish, and how to do a quick dip wash with some oil in order to make a really fantastic tabletop standard for your miniatures. As you can see in this picture, this is what your squad of demons will look like. We have 20 demonets as well as an infernal raptress and this is the technique and uh, items we use in order to paint up this unit so with that being said let's get this video on a roll all right for set number one you got the primer miniatures with some rustoleum flat white primer that runs you three dollars and 99 cents at your local walmart and after you get done priming those miniatures it's always a good idea to do that i suggest using a white primer on these guys because uh, i want to have a really bright colored finish on these demonets of slanesh and you'll probably want to do exactly the same thing as well now granted black primer will give you nice little darker areas for shadows and things of that nature but if you want a really bright vibrant color and uh, want to have a really nice finish for your miniatures i suggest using white and since we're using an oil wash method on this anyways it's going to darken down the colors anyhow so you can't go wrong there now it's of course once you're done priming your miniature the next thing you do of course is work on step number two which is base coating on the flesh now there is a lot of flesh exposed on these demonets of slanesh uh, for obvious reasons so because of that the color i use which is flesh by apple barrel paint that's a two fluid ounce tube but you can buy it at your local walmart runs you about 50 cents for that color as well now the reason why i'm painting these guys in a flesh color is because i'm kind of mimicking a heavy metal painting technique that was used back in the mid 90s for demonets of slanesh uh, back in the mid 90s demonets were painted in this kind of pale skin color is what they basically had for their flesh and they had these huge red crab claws and that's exactly the same kind of technique i'm going to use for my miniatures as well to make it you know harken back to the time when i was first getting into warhammer so you'll need to do two thin coats of flesh with apple barrel paint and then you're ready to move on to the next step all right, so the next thing you do now for step number three is a dry brush. We're going to use Delta Serum Coats Peaches and Cream in order to do this. Like I said, we're going to go for this kind of pale flesh look on these miniatures. So because that, we're going to be doing two layers of dry brushing. So the very first dry brushing layer is going to be Peaches and Cream. Just do a nice little simple dry brush all over the parts that are going to be exposed, which are the flesh portions. What it does, it helps catch the highlight and also adds some detail to the miniature as well by adding some three-dimensionality. As you can see, the Peaches and Cream has come the highlight to the flesh. So because of that, the darker flesh colors in the recesses while the lighter skin tone kind of surfaces at the top with peaches and cream so to do a real quick dry brush with that and you're ready to move on to step number four and step number four is exactly the same thing doing another dry brush this time we're using white or using apple barrel white runs you about 50 cents at your local walmart two fluids ounce tube and you just could do a very light dry brushing with the white uh, onto the miniature you don't want to add too much on it because you want to make these things look pale white what you just want to do is just, just add a little bit enough of a detail to just kind of add some uh, highlights with on the miniature so then you have the flesh tone dry brush with the peaches and cream or then another additional layer of white on top of that to make these guys look really nice and pale as well and uh, whether you believe it or not you actually accomplish most of the miniature there's basically only three major parts for this miniature and uh, the flesh is actually one of the steps so now we're all done with the flesh time for us to move on to the hair all right, so for the hair on these miniatures, I decided to base coat uh, three different types of colors of hair for these miniatures. I decided to do that to add some color variety uh, to the miniatures. For half of the unit, I decided to paint up their hair in Concord Grape, so it's a nice rich purple color. For the other half of the squad, I decided to paint up their hair in Bright Magenta to give it a nice pink color. And then for the Infernal, Infernal Raptress, I decided to use Bright Blue for hers as well. All three of these paints are made by Apple Barrel Paint. They run about 50 cents per tube at your local Walmart, and you're gonna do two thin base coats for each of the hair. So as you can see on the left hand side, the half of the squad is done in purple, the right is done in the bright magenta, and of course the Infernal Raptor is also done in blue. Also, I forgot to mention, the guy who's being turned into the living harp that the Infernal Raptor uh, plays, uh, you'll need to paint those tendons also in bright magenta as well. So just do two thin coats for each of these colors onto the hair that you want, and then from there you're ready to move on to the next step. So for step number six, now that we're done base coating the hair, the next thing we need to do now is dry brush the hair. We need to dry brush the purple hair using Lime Like Mist. We need to dry brush the pink hair using Cameo Pink. And then for the blue hair, we'll need to use Sky Blue. Once again, all three of these are made by Apple Barrel Paint, and they also run 50 cents per tube at your local Walmart. And as you can see here, I just did a simple dry brushing on all three different types of hair, depending on who it was. So I, for the purple color there, I got that Lilac Mist. It's a nice pastel look that adds some three-dimensionality, leaving the darker Concord Grape in the recesses. Same exact 
thing is taking place on the right hand side with the cameo pink adding catching those highlights leaving the bright magenta in the recesses and exactly the same thing in the middle the sky blue is highlighting the re uh, highlights while at the same time keeping the bright blue in the recesses on it and it looks absolutely fantastic adds a lot of three dimensionality to your miniatures now if you're worried about all the dry brushing you'll notice at this point that these miniatures look very chalky and very pastel and if you're worried about that don't be and the reason why is because we will eventually give all these miniatures an oil wash and when we do it's going to flatten that chalky look to it it's going to smooth out the texture on it it's also going to blend the colors as well so with that being said now that you guys are done with the hair the next uh, part we need to work on now are the corsets which is the body armor that the demonets are wearing all right, so step number seven, we're gonna base coat all the corsets that other demonets are wearing with apple barrel pavement. It's gonna cost you 50 cents per tube of that stuff. Now, apple barrel pavement is actually very close to black, but it's actually not a black color. It's actually a very, very dark gray. And it's a wonderful paint to use. I highly suggest using this pavement color for anything that you need to do in black. And the reason why that is the case is because it actually has a little bit of texturing to the paint as well. So when you dry brush it, it does a really marvelous job of dry brushing it. So as you can see, the corsets actually cover the midsections of almost every single one of these demonets in various places so the parts that are covered of course with this corset you'll just need to do the entire thing in pavement now there's also some metal parts that are also part of the uh, courses that they wear kind of like breastplates and things of that nature you'll pick those out later on with metallic paints later on so for now just go ahead and concentrate on just covering as much of the corsets as you need to in pavement you don't need to be particularly neat at this point just make sure that you don't spill the pavement over to the flesh and if you do just neaten up with some flesh tone and then of course you'll be all done with that so you can see in this picture i've done the entire squad's corsets in pavement black and now we're done with that that moving on to the dry brush. All right, so that takes us to step number eight, which is another dry brush. This time we're using Apple Barrel's Granite Gray. It's a very, very, very light gray, almost a white color almost. And we're just doing a real simple dry brush on all the corsets that each of the demonets is wearing as well. And as you can see there, it catches all the raised surfaces, adds also the capture the texturing designs. Another nice thing about the highlighting with the, uh, the Granite Gray with dry brushing, you can also see what part of the corsets actually met rimmed in metallics. So because I will be taking that out in gold when the time comes, when you start using our metallic paints on that. So all you gotta do is just do a very light dry brush with Granite gray to the darkness or the lightness of your just personal preference um, me i just kind of did a quick one real fast real makes it real simple real easy as well and if you're worried about the granite gray getting on the skin don't worry because it's such a pale gray it actually ends up looking like white on the skin so if you do make a mistake don't worry about it you know just touch up if you need to but for the most part though you should be largely okay so now that the corset's flesh and the hair is done last major bit on these miniatures that we need to work on next are the crab claws that they have all right, so the next part of the miniature they're going to work on are the claws that they have. So like I said before, um, back in the mid-90s, uh, they had this really awesome, like, reddish color for their crab claws that they had on the old demonet miniatures, and that kind of resonated with me even to now, so that's exactly the same kind of color scheme I want to create for my demonets. So because of that, I'm going to paint out all the claws in red. In this case, I use Anita's Acrylic All-Purpose True Red. Uh, it costs you about 65 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. You need two thin coats of that for all the crab claws, and uh, this stuff looks really awesome. As you can see here it just really pops against the flesh it's a beautiful bright red color and i just use it for everything i'm just really happy with it especially when you combine it with the oil wash method i use for my quick washing it just comes out looking really awesome so because of that all the parts are going to be claws as you can see there from the infernal raptors to all the demonets even to the crab claws that are up on the standard bearer on the left hand side i just picked out all those claw claws and just put them into uh, two thin layers of anita's all-purpose of true red and now that we're done with that, the next thing we need to do now is dry brush all the claws as well. For this, we use Apple Barrel's Tropic Orange. It runs you 50 cents at your local Walmart. It's another two ounce tube. And you're just doing a simple dry brushing all the claws as well. Now, uh, traditionally, when you dry brush things with red, you usually want to pick one of two colors. You usually want to go with an orange color or with a pink. Um, I decided to go with orange instead of pink because there's a lot of pink on these miniatures already. I just didn't really want the claws to be blending in with the hair and all that kind of stuff. So because I decided to move away from the pink, I used the Tropic Orange to add some contrast and then add some variety as well. And as you can see, the dry brushing of the Tropic Orange has captured the three-dimensionality of the claws. It's really caught the highlights while the true red stays within the recessed portions of the claws. So that part is really nice as well. So just do a quick dry brush of Tropic Orange and you're ready to move on. So now that the major parts of the miniatures are completed, now it's time to work on the detail parts. So step number 11 is where we start working on the details. In this case, we're picking out the talons. And we're going to pay out the talons in two thin coats of pavement. So we're going back to that color again. Now, if you're wondering why did I wait to, to this point to do the talons, the reason why is because I want to make sure that I took care of all the corsets as well as the skin and everything else first. And I really didn't want to mess up uh, painting up the claws and getting it hit with a dry brush from the flesh. And that's the reason why I waited so long. And the reason why is because I'm going with two different colors for the claws on the, on, for the 
up talons on these miniatures. For any talons that are coming out of the flesh, so like the talons on their toes, or on their forearms, or on their tails, I'm picking those out in black, because it's a nice contrasting color to the flesh tone. Now any talons and spikes are coming out of their crab claws, I'm picking those out in light mocha, because it's a nice contrasting color to the bright red. And that's the reason why I'm waiting and doing two different colors on this one. So you can see here for this one, for the pavement, things like spikes coming out of their shins, out of their tails, out of the toes, I painted all those in two thin layers of pavement. And for step number 12, I did exactly the same thing with Light Mocha by Apple Barrel Paint as well. This time I'm picking out all the spikes that are on the claws. So if you look on the inside of the crab claws for each of the demonettes, there's usually spikes and talons and stuff like that inside of those. I picked out those with two thin layers of mocha, Light Mocha so that way it has like a bone look to it as well. Same thing with any claws that are coming out, the spikes are coming out of the forearms of these miniatures as well uh, because they actually have quite a bit of it. So I just do two thin layers of Light Mocha as well. So now all those details, talons are completely taken care of. All right, so the next detail we're working on for step number 13 is for the fabric. So for this one, we're doing a base coat with Apple Barrel's Candy Pink. It runs at 50 cents at your local Walmart. It's a nice bright pink color, and uh, you'll need to do two thin coats of this stuff. So you can see for all the loin cloths that they're wearing, as well as for the, the skirt around the Infernal Raptors, same thing with the standard bear there on the left-hand side. I decided to pick out in Candy Pink as well. And the reason why I decided to use that bright pink color is because it's kind of funny, because a lot of people think of pink as being this weak color for whatever strange reason. You know, I'm a fan of bright bold color and I think one of the funniest things is whenever you have something that's pink that destroys something on the battlefield your opponent just kind of like gets all sad about it I don't know why I guess because they think that's because something is pink is supposed to be weak or whatever so that's the reason why I decided to go with it. it's kind of like really neat to do that so because as you can see that the I just did two thin layers of ca candy pink for all the fabric that the uh, demons are wearing as well plus it also looks really nice too when you do the oil wash and just kind of blends in so it looks really cool so now we're moving on to step number 14 and 15, and this is actually specifically for the uh, Infernal Raptors as well as the Standard Bearer with the flag on it. So first of all, what you need to do now is dry brush all the parts you did in Candy Pink with Cameo Pink, which is the very same one that we used to dry brush the hair earlier. So as you can see here, I just basically did a nice simple dry brushing on the skirt of the Infernal Raptors. Same thing with the banner of the Standard Bearer there on the left-hand side. The next thing you also need to do is pick out some additional details in Concord Grape, which is on the right-hand side there, which is the color we used before, uh, for the the Infernal Raptors, I used it for the loincloth surrounding the human harp thing that's kneeling before her. It's just kind of just really gruesome looking. But anyways, so I decided to use it for that character that's being, you know, turned into a harp string, which is kind of sad. I used two thin coats of that for the loincloth. And at the same time, I also did exactly the same thing for the Selenesh emblem on the flag there on the right-hand side. Did two thin layers of Conquer Grip for that. And that just to add some more detail to these miniatures as well. So with all the major painting done, now it's time to move up to the metallics. For number step number 16 and 17, we're now picking out all the silver pieces. So for all the parts, this is the step number 16, the uh, folk art anniversary silver. That is primarily for the Infernal Raptors is what it is. The Infernal Raptors has a lot of silver chains around her forehead as well as around her hips as well. So because I wanted those to be really bright silver, so I picked those out real quick in anniversary silver to make it shimmery because she's actually wearing jewelry is actually what she's actually doing. So because I picked that out in anniversary silver, silver to kind of mimic back. Now there is also for the darker metals on these characters, there's a lot of darker metals on these Slanesh uh, demonets. Things like on the one class, a lot of them have chain mail. So because I use Gunmetal Gray by Folk Art, both of these tubes were running about 75 cents at your local Walmart. Gunmetal Gray is a nice dark metal color. It just looks really awesome, pops really well and contrasts very well with the uh, pink that goes in for most of the clothing they're wearing. So because I just do two thin layers of that as well. Also I focus on the Infernal Raptors as well. As you notice the heart of the harp guy in the middle he's got kind of like this weird kind of spiky wavy frame that he's holding up in the air to uh, make up the harp so i decided to pick that out in uh, good middle gray as well so just two thin layers of that both those suits when you 75 cents at your local hobby lobby all right, so step number 18 is another base kit with metallics. This time it's going to be with Copper by Folk Art. Runs at 75 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. And this is going to be only focused on two characters. The first one is the standard bear on the left. This one is another standard bear that doesn't have a flag, but she does have a Slanesh symbol on the top of her banner. So because that, I picked that out in um, Copper as well, and I also did the same thing with the butt cap on, the, on that uh, standard bearer she's carrying as well. If you notice, I also use Gunmetal Gray on the shaft, as well as the spikes on the standard bearer too, to make it really pop. That copper color is a nice, real, nice, really nice contrasting color on the standard bearer. It just looks really cool, especially when you pair it with the skull with the pink hair there in the middle of the standard bearer. And I decided to do exactly the same thing with the harp, uh, the harp 
a frame for the Inferno Raptors as well. Just having it all be all silver just kind of looked kind of weird to me. And then I look close at the model, I actually saw that actually parts of the miniature are actually made up of different types of metal. Like the silver parts are more of a rough finish while there's these smooth looking metal plates that kind of frame around the Slanesh symbol that's up there in the top left corner of the miniature. So because of that, these end caps that are on the harp frame, I decided to pick those out in copper, just to add some contrast and make it look a little bit more interesting and add some detail there. So all you gotta do is two thin coats of copper and you're ready to move on. All right, so one of the very last metallic parts we're gonna use now is step number 19, and that's for all the gold pieces on the miniature. We're gonna base coat all the gold portions of the Slanesh Divinets in pure gold by Folk Art. Runs you about 75 cents at your local uh, Hobby Lobby, and that's exactly what I decided to focus on. So there's a lot of gold on these miniatures, well, a lot of parts of these miniatures I'm gonna paint in gold. So for example, like I said before, on their corsets, their corsets are actually made up of a combination of both leather, which I painted in black pavement, as well as metal. So if you notice, like on the chest plates that are on the corsets, I picked those out in gold to make it look really neat they also have a lot of ringlets around their arms as well as their ankles so you, because of that you find those little details and add those and just kind of uh, paint those ringlets around their thighs as well as their forearms as well as their ankles and just pick those details out in gold as well same thing with any of the jewelry that's going on for the character so for example the infernal raptress she has a lot of little charms hanging off of her silver chain so i picked those out as well same thing with the designs along her skirt i picked out those slanish designs as well in pure gold too at the same time on the standard bear on the left hand side with the flag on it, um, I decided to edge the uh, edge highlight to the edge of that purple Slanesh symbol in gold, which was a major pain, but it looked really nice when it was done. So because of that, that's what I did as well. So any jewelry, things like hair cuffs, take care of those. The Slanesh symbol on the harp uh, for the uh, Infernal Raptress. So whatever parts you want to be in gold, just put two thin layers of pure gold on it. And then for you, actually, if you didn't know it already, you're pretty much done with these miniatures. We only have a couple of more details to do and they're ready for an oil wash. All right, so step number 20. This one is for the Infernal Raptress. And I'm gonna do some paste coating and some Delta Serum Coat Tahitian Blue. And the reason why is because, like I said before, she has a little, a lot of little charms all over her belts and stuff and on her chains as well as the uh, tiara that she's wearing. And so for the jewelry that she's wearing, I decided to use Tahitian Blue. It's a nice, bright uh, turquoise color that contrasts very nicely with the pink as well as with the gold. So you can see there, I picked out some of the charms that are hanging off of her chains around her hips. I also did the same thing with the forehead tiara. Also did exactly the same thing with that blue swirling vortex in the middle of the Slanesh symbol as well as the charms hanging off of it as well. Just to put two thin layers of Tahitian blue, it makes a really nice uh, contrasting color to pop from that. I forgot to mention, you can't really see it, but the slave who's like kneeling, carrying the harp, he's got like a necklace around his neck as well. I also picked out the jewel there with uh, Tahitian blue as well. And the very last step we're doing for step number 21 for all the base coating is the eyes. We're picking out all the eyes in Apple Barrel's Winter Green. It's a cost of 50 cents at your local Walmart. It's a nice minty green color, and I just took a small little dot of that winter green and just dotted each of the eyes for the uh, demonettes. Uh, they have really expressive eyes on these miniatures, and by picking on that growing green color, it makes it look like it's glowing, you know, it makes it look really supernatural and demonic as well. This way you can say, like, oh, yeah, these are not human beings, these are something demonic because they look absolutely terrifying. So just do that for all the miniatures real quick. Quick, and then we are done with the base coat and the dry brushing. The next step is an oil wash. All right, for step number 22, as well as step number 23, this is for the oil wash. We're gonna wash these miniatures in uh, oil wash by Midwax Poly Shades Mission Oak, is what we're gonna use for that. It's uh, basically a combination of polyurethane as well as a stain. Now, when, usually when you do a quick paint method using oil washes, most people would recommend that you use Army Painter Strong Tones, which you use. Army Painter Strong Tones, a wonderful product, does an excellent job. The only problem is that it runs $32 per can, while Midwax Poly Shades only is $6.99, and does exactly the same thing, so that's what I did. So as you can see here, I just took the uh, poly shades. All I did is I take an old paintbrush, I dip it inside the poly shade, and then what I do is I just wash the entire miniatures with a brush. I don't recommend you taking the miniature and dipping it into the solution, then flicking it to, you know, that's just a horrible method of doing anything. Uh, the simplest way of doing it is just applying it like you would any, or, uh, any wash at all. This does a couple of things. First of all, it creeps into the recesses, so it draws out a lot of the details. So you can see there the individual strands of hair, the texturing on the skin, on the corsets, everything else like that. It does a really beautiful job of bringing out those details. Details. At the same time, it also blends the layers of dry brushing as well as base coating and kind of blends it together. It also kind of smooths out the texturing on the miniatures as well. It takes away a lot of that pastel -y, chalky look that was going on with all the dry brushing too. And at the same time, it also darkens down the colors and kind of mutes them a little bit. So now all those bright colors that we had earlier are def 
definitely muted down and look more solid, look more realistic, and it just looks really awesome as well. So then you have like this nice brown wash finish over the entirety of the miniature. Now for the next step, of course, I suggest you wait 24 hours to let this stuff dry and cure because it is a mixture of stain and polyurethane. So the stain part will make all the darker colors and adds the recesses, while the polyurethane will add a thin protective coat that protect your miniature as well. I also recommend that you wait 24 hours because if this stuff is still sticky when you're handling it while painting, you could rub off some of the paint and it just really screw up your finish. So just wait 24 hours. My suggestion to you is when you do this stage, wait to the next day to continue on with your painting. All right, so step number 24. This one is actually kind of optional. Um, when you do the uh, oil wash with the polyurethane stain, you'll have this nice, shiny, canny coating on your miniatures. Now, if you're a big fan of that sheen, you can keep that. Now, you could skip this step entirely. However, I like mine having a matte finish on mine. So because of that, I just spray it with a can of Krylon matte finish. Runs at $3.99 at your local Walmart. Does an excellent job of muting down that sheen. And as you can see, it brings out a lot of the details, a lot of the colors. You can just see, look how awesome looking that these demonets look like. It just brought a lot of the details and just makes your miniature look really really cool very very quickly looks like you spent ages getting this done and all it took was a couple of hours of uh, painting so all you gotta do is do some matte finish real quick and you're ready to move on so the last thing we're gonna work on for number 25 is the base. So as you can see, I have some sand that I put on the base on this, and I decided to go with this kind of purplish base coat that they're standing on to make it look like they're coming out of the warp or out of the Aroma of Chaos. So because of that, I just used two thin layers of Concord Grape by Apple Barrel. This is the same purple we use for all the purple in the miniatures. Just do two thin coats real quick on the sand bases. Now, if you're wondering how I did that texturing, it's a really simple combination. I've shown a video about how to do it in my earlier cheap shots, but all you gotta do is just take some wood glue, put it on the base, dip the base in some sand, wait for it to dry, and then you just add a mixture of water and wood glue on top of it to act as a sealant and does a beautiful job texturing it. And so that's what I did for the texturing on this. And when I mean sand, I don't mean modeling sand. I mean sand from outside sand. Just go outside and get some nice sand and, you know, use that because paying for sand is just crazy in my opinion. So anyway, so I just do two thin coats of Concord Great, let it dry, and then you move on for a dry brush. All right, so now that you're done with the purple, next thing you do now is dry brush the purple base real quick with some granite gray. Granite gray is a really, really, really bright gray. It's almost to the white spectrum almost. And so I just do a quick dry brushing with that as well. It adds kind of like this weird kind of ashy, warp, supernatural, things are not quite right, or walking through a different dimension type of effect on the base. I really can't explain it, but this is the color I use. This is what I imagine what, you know, the ground would look like in the Garden of Slaanesh or something like, I'm oh, sorry, the uh, Palace of Slaanesh or something like that. So that's what I did just real quick. Just do a quick dry brushing real quick with granite gray over the purple. As you can see, it creates this kind of off-worldy, grayish, purplish, vortex looking thing. It just looks really awesome. And then finally for set number 25, we just do the brims of the bases. We do two thin coats of Anita's acrylic gray on the bases. And I just rim the base real quick. That runs at 65 cents at your local Walmart. And then just wait for it to dry and you are completely done. And as you can see there, it creates a really nice contrasting color. The gray contrasts very nice with the purple on the bases and the purple and the gray also contrast nicely with the pink and the flesh. It just looks really, really awesome as well. It looks very supernatural and very demonic. And uh, with this step over with, you're pretty much done. And of course, here's a close-up of the final results. As you can see here, this is a unit of 24 demonettes or 20 demonettes with a Infernal Rapturous. And the grand total it would cost you to take all these materials that we suggested for you to buy and to paint these miniatures. If you're assuming you're buying all these paints for the very first time, and the material for the, for the very first time to paint this up, we're talking about a grand total of estimate of $27.57 is how much it would cost you in order to buy all those materials in order to paint up this unit with the method that we just showed you guys. So it saves you a lot of money in order to do that as well. So now that we're done showing you exactly how much it costs to do the cheapskate method to get this done. We'll go ahead and compare that now with the Games Workshop Citadel as well as Army Painter method. You will show you the list of products you'll need to paint up your miniatures how much it would cost and show you the grand total for that one. All right, so this is the shopping list you need to have if you wanted to paint these miniatures up using Games Workshop, uh, Citadel, and Army Painter Materials. So first of all, for your primers, you'll need to buy Corax White Spray by Games Workshop, runs at $17. For all the flesh painting for the base coating, you need to buy Acadian Flesh Tone, runs you $4.55. You'll then need to dry brush that with Flayed One Flesh, which runs you $4.55, and then dry brush it once again with White Scar, but that would cost you $4.55 as well. Now for the hair, you will need to buy Gene Stealer Purple for the purple hair, that runs you $4.55. Techless Blue, 
blue for the Infernal Raptors is hair, which runs at $4.55. And Screamer Pink for all the demonettes that's gonna have pink hair, runs at $4.55 for those as well. Now then, you will need to dry brush the purple hair with the Kala Lilac, which runs at $4.55. Blue Horror, you need to do dry brushing for the blue hair, which runs at $4.55. And you use Fulgrim Pink to do the dry brushing, runs at $4.55 for that as well. Now for the corsets, you will need to buy Eshin Gray for the black corsets, that runs at $4.55. And then you'll need to dry brush with Ultimon Gray for $4.55 as well. You also need to use that same Ultimon Gray for the dry brushing on the bases as well when the time comes. Now for the Crab Claws, you'll need to buy Mephiston Red, which runs at $4.55 for your base coat. And then you'll need to dry brush it with Luganath Orange, which runs another $4.55 as well. And then for the Claws and Talons, you'll need to buy Morgas Bone for the Crab Claws, that runs at $4.55. And you'd use the same Eshin Gray that you bought earlier for all the Talons that are going to be black as well. Now also next for the pink fabric that the characters are wearing, you'll need to buy Emperor's Children for that to make the base coat for that and that'll cost you $4.55 and you'll just of course just dry brush it real quick with some Screamer Pink or with some Fulgrim Pink in order to make that effect that you purchased earlier. Now you'll also need to use Slanesh Gray for the bases, for the rims of the bases that run you $4.55 for that as well. Now we're moving on to the metallic paints. For the uh, so all the parts are going to be in gunmetal gray, you'll need to buy Iron Breaker, uh, sorry, Lead Belcher, which is $7.80. And then for all the bright silver pieces, you'll need to use Iron Breaker, which is $7.80 as well. For all the parts, it's going to be copper. That's going to get to buy Screaming Bell, which is $7.80 for that. And then for all the gold pieces on these miniatures, you'll need to buy Retributor Armor, which is $7.80 as well. The very last parts we're going to talk about is Baharoth Blue. You'll need to use that to pick up the charms and jewelry on the Infernal Raptress. And then you buy a tub of Gaster, a Gas Blaster Green, which is $4.55. And that's for all the eyes on the miniatures as well. Now, if you were to do a quick paint method for these miniatures, you'll need to buy a can of Army Painter Strong Tone, which is thirty-two dollars in order to do that. And then finally, you'll need to buy a can of Munitorium Varnish by Games Workshop to get that matte varnish, and that's going to run you nineteen dollars and fifty cents. Now, assuming you go out and buy all these materials from Games Workshop as well as Army Painter, we're talking about a grand total investment of one hundred eighty-one dollars as well as sixty cents in order to do that. So, as you can see here, my Cheapskate method costs $24.57 in order to paint up these miniatures. If you were to compare that with the Games Workshop Army Painter method, that would run you $181.60. You subtract the two, and you end up with a grand total savings of $154.03. As you can see there, you can buy a heck of a lot of miniatures for $154, and instead of bang all that for the name brand paints and stuff like that. And you get exactly the same kind of nice tabletop finish as the other stuff would, except you're saving a hell of a lot of cash and dough as opposed to the other stuff. Stuff. So that's going to do it for this week, guys. This is how you quickly and cheaply paint up some demonets of Slanesh and save you $150 at the same time. As always, you guys, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. You guys' input is invaluable to us as always. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest, greatest hobby news related to this channel. That's going to do it for this one, you guys. We'll catch you guys next one. Peace out and stay classy.